three, two, one. Holy. In front of us, we have seven phones, seven of the wildest, rarest limited edition phones you've ever seen. So let's go from hard to find to one of a kind. You'll see what I mean. All right, number seven is the Galaxy S21 Olympic Games Athlete Edition. Because yes, Samsung created just 17,000 of these units exclusively to give one to each Olympic and Paralympic athlete who competed in the Tokyo Olympic Games a few months ago. 17,000 is not a lot of units for a company who might sell 10, 20 million of their normal variants. And so of course, a whole bunch of these athletes stock them on eBay. And I was one of the suckers who paid $3,000 for one. I just wanna make good videos, okay? The packaging isn't anything elaborate, very eco-conscious, but there are a few extras. For example, every athlete who got one of these phones also got a pair of purple Galaxy Buds Pro. As far as I can see though, they are literally just the normal buds that anyone can buy. But then also a limited edition case for those buds with this skateboarder chilling inside Samsung's latest foldable. And then the phone itself. That is gorgeous. I think this is an exquisite color combo. I love this contrast of the deep blue on the back with soft gold all the way around the rims, which I'm imagining is symbolic of a gold trophy. Only trophy I've won in a while. And if we compare it to the original Galaxy S21, they've changed a lot of stuff here. It's got this pretty wacky new startup animation. It's got new Olympic wallpapers, a new color scheme, which feels like quite a departure, and more importantly, a completely different style. This is the first time I think I've ever seen Samsung using circular icons, and I actually think it's an improvement. But I'm even more excited about this one. So I've grown up watching a fair few martial arts movies. My dad loves them. And within this genre, there is one guy who is normally referred to as the single greatest icon, Bruce Lee. And so I almost can't believe I'm saying this, but in front of me right now is the Bruce Lee phone. And while Samsung's athlete edition was pretty rare at 17,000 units, this one has just 4,000 globally. Full stop. I'm not exactly sure how this links to Bruce Lee exactly, but this is meant to be a gaming phone with a whole load of very excessive gaming features. What an unboxing experience though. It's like a pop-up book. Uh, underneath the phone, we've got a yellow bumper case. I'm not sure I've ever seen one of those come with a phone. Oh, this is so cool. They've actually gone as far as to change the color of the charger and cable. And this isn't any ordinary charger and cable. It's a 67 watt fast charger and an L-shaped USB-C cable. They've probably done this so you can carry on playing even while charging. They've even changed the color of the inside of the USB-C plug. Completely unnecessary attention to detail, but it does make it feel exclusive. Okay, that is one of the most class designs I think I've ever seen. It's far from elegant, but it's got these little textured grips on the sides where your fingers rest. The camera system looks genuinely different and the colors are punchy as hell. Get it? A joke. If you're going to make a sharp, aggressive gaming phone, that's how you do it. Let's try it. Oh, there's LEDs inside the camera. And also, because it's a phone made for gaming, if I release these catches here, you get physical shoulder buttons that pop up from the sides. <laughs> Watch how I break it before I've even turned it on. There's a Bruce Lee startup animation. Hmm. The only letdown here is that once you get into the phone, it's literally just a normal UI. No special Bruce Lee theming or icons. Serious? Lee? <laughs> Number five is a bit of a different limited edition, actually, in that it doesn't really have a theme. So you might have heard of the Mi 11. It's Xiaomi's main 2021 flagship. They're equivalent to Samsung's S21. Well, alongside that phone, they also launched the Mi 11 Special Edition, which serves no other purpose than to just be a fancier version of the Mi 11. I like the box. It swaps out the flat black or white that you'd normally get for this reflective rainbow finish. You get an insert. Oh, okay. <laughs> just a normal clear case. You get the phone and then just a normal charger and cable. This is very, very interesting. In contrast to how vanilla the unboxing experience is, the phone itself is psychedelic. I feel like I'm getting dizzy just looking at it. It's like every single color everywhere 
at the same time. But also like, it's properly ridged. Listen to this. I feel like I could file my nails on that. And then at the bottom, you get this mini paragraph, which I think looks kind of naff. But then also a signature from Lei Jun, the CEO of Xiaomi. Now, I feel like here in the West, most people don't know who he is, but in the East, he has got crazy fandom. He's considered like the Steve Jobs of China. The software isn't anything out of this world, but phone number one is. Number four though, I'm expecting this to be God tier. So right here we have not one, but two different super limited versions of the Oppo Find X3 Pro, which is Oppo's 2021 flagship. And if you've seen any of Oppo's past limited editions, you'll know that this company does not mess around. So let's start with the Mars Exploration Edition. Long story short, in 2020, China launched their first ever robotic spacecraft straight to Mars to pick up rock samples, audio recordings, just to figure out as much stuff as possible about this planet. And this year in 2021, that craft successfully landed. So this is a celebration of that. What did they do to this box? It kinda looks like it has explored Mars on the way here. <laughs> It's really heavy though, that's a good sign. And straight up, love this orange and gray color combo. You get a hardback 2021 Mars board to, I don't know, look at. The phone, we'll get to that in a second. And, oh, strong black theme also running through this, which I guess makes sense because space is black and black is also kind of what companies have started using for their pro phones. And this phone is extremely pro. It's the highest possible spec of the pro version of their 2021 flagship. So we're talking 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, the full works. And then finally, a case that feels quite gritty, I guess, like the surface of Mars. Okay, the phone itself. It's made of frosted gray glass, smoothed out almost to the point of being soft to the touch. This might just be the single most comfortable thing I've ever held. There's literally not a single sharp edge here, but yeah, I mean, as a color, we've seen gray before. That said, there's a few cool things about this. So for starters, it's got engraved into it, Utopia Planitia, which is the site that China landed in on Mars. Isn't it kind of crazy that we now have names for places on other planets? You get an exclusive Mars wallpaper that shows the planet at various different times throughout the day, and a color filter in the camera that can apparently make Earth look like Mars. And secondly, the Photographer Edition. This only just recently came out. It's a collaboration between Oppo and Kodak. It's almost impossible to find, and I think it's gonna put the last one to shame. I love this. So this entire phone and unboxing experience is themed after the Kodak 35, which is one of the company's most iconic cameras actually used a lot during World War II. We've got a plush leather-like material on the outside and a metal lid. This is top five smartphone boxes I've ever opened. And felt on the inside of the lid too. They really have gone hard. Okay, so then there's a hardback insert with some manuals inside. The phone. We get a chunky insert. Wow, that's, that's stunning. White leather on top, black leather on the bottom. A pair of earphones, plus a lanyard that attaches onto the case so that you don't drop your phone while taking photos. And then right at the bottom is a fast charger and a USB-C cable. This is so slick. I've never seen this combo. It's silver fogged glass on the top to give the impression of metal, and then the bottom half is leather. It's not particularly plush leather, but I'm well on board with the concept of both having leather and two-toned phone backs like this. The software looks pretty familiar if you've used an Oppo phone before, but being the photographer edition, this has 14 different filters to use for different types of cityscapes. Oh yeah, and also this is a top spec Find X3 Pro. So 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, but with this you also get a terabyte of cloud storage to be able to keep your photos. My only reservation is that of all camera companies to partner with, why Oppo chose Kodak? It's not like they're exactly known for their high-end imaging. Exposure, probably. An unfortunate camera pun. 
Hey, do you want to hear about a really poorly named phone? Like, way worse than even Sony's naming. Well, this right here is the smartphone for Snapdragon Insiders. That's literally the model name. It's like if I changed my channel to YouTuber for phone enthusiasts. You might have heard of Qualcomm. They make the Snapdragon chips that power almost every Android flagship. Well, what tends to happen is, at the start of each generation, Qualcomm will come and say, hey, this is our next generation chip. It's gonna allow phones with this chip to do this, this, and this. But then in reality, almost no phone maker fully takes advantage of the chip. So one day, Qualcomm is just like, screw it. We're making our own. This thing is super limited. It's $1,500. It's not even trying to sell in big numbers, but its cameras have been rated as well above the Galaxy S21 Ultras and its audio quality apparently in a league of its own. This is actually why it comes with these earphones included. See, one of the key things that their latest chip supports is the ability to wirelessly play songs in what they call studio master quality. And these are some of the few earphones that can properly take advantage of that. Anyways, you also get a red and black bumper case. I can think of one YouTuber who'd appreciate this. A thick, chunky case for those earphones. And then, whoops, the charging brick plus cables. Okay, this design is not for me. Even with the LED backlit logo, the whole thing feels distinctly prototypey and lost in some halfway house between going for actually sharp, squarer edges and the more elegant circular design elements. Everything from the screen bezels to the home screen wallpaper to the sheer size of this unit are all a bit clunky. Let's try this camera though, I am curious. That's a pretty spicy photo, not gonna lie. <laughs> but what about this audio quality? Well, I have Tidal loaded up, which is basically the audiophile version of Spotify. First time I'm trying this, let's go. Right, um, it's tough for me to say how much of this is gonna be the earphones and how much of it is the chip on the phone, but this combination is so rich that it almost wants to make me forgive the naming. <laughs> Okay, number two. This one's taken me a long time to get hold of. Lots of eBay alerts and eventually $2,700 of cash too. So, late last year, OnePlus decided to partner up with the video game Cyberpunk 2077. And to be fair to them, this could have been an awesome deal. Cyberpunk was pegged to be literally the game of the decade, but when it eventually came out and it was so unbelievably glitchy that PlayStation refused to sell it, I imagine OnePlus probably decided not to talk about this too much. The sad part of it is though, this might be their coolest limited edition ever. So much so that if you get the full set, it comes in three separate parts. Oh, glitches, how appropriate. So we'll start with the phone. I have seen a few photos of it online. And I remember when I first looked at it, I was just like, damn, this is more than just a paint job. This is a redesign. We've got an outer sleeve. That's new. I'm assuming this is the map of the game world, which they call Night City. The core accessories, they don't look too different. You still get a white power brick, phone on top, and still a red charging cable. But this is where it starts getting special. You get a cyberpunk badge. That's kind of horrifying, to be honest. A pretty stealthy black and yellow case. And then inside this insert are actually more cyberpunk goodies. Legends are born in Night City. I'm pretty sure you were born in China, but sure the sheet of stickers, and the poster. Here's the main event though. Okay, this is so well done. Like it is actually based on this phone, the OnePlus 8T, but the limited edition is so heavily customized that you wouldn't know looking at it. How they've extended the camera across the entire width of the phone. How the back goes from glossy to matte to glossy. How it's almost got this concrete finish in the middle and yellow and gold highlights throughout. Let's boot it up. Oh, that's uh, different and slightly alarming. A few cool things to note when you're in the phone. The live wallpaper is wicked. I've never seen a phone theme this heavily customized. You've got black and yellow everywhere, sci-fi sound effects baked in, and I really respect when companies go to lengths like this. They've even made custom cyberpunk themed fingerprint scanner animations. I wonder if the camera's different. Ooh, yeah, 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 look. We've got a cyberpunk filter here too, called Night City. Ooh, listen to that. I think that's one of the most well-executed filters I've ever used. Damn. 
I look like I've just come out the oven. And if you think about it, this cyberpunk collab makes so much sense. Like every single year, companies come on stage to tell us that their new phone is the future. And when you're collabing with a game that's literally set in the year 2077, it allows you to run with that idea. Who doesn't want their tech to be more futuristic? Plus, this desirability is also fueled by how hard the damn thing is to get hold of. OnePlus never announced exactly how many units, but I do know that in some countries like Malaysia, there were as few as 10 phones available. Okay, so then we have the second part of this, the watch. This is a cyberpunk version of the OnePlus watch, which to be honest, as a product on its own, I don't rate too highly. Its operating system is pretty limited, but for the same reason that I love this future theme on the phone, it might well also add something here too. So far so good. Big fan of the yellow accents dotted all the way around. It pairs really well with the phone. One hour later. Ugh, it's just a shame that the software is a genuine mess. I've spent at least a full hour trying to set this thing up using three different phones and I've had three separate error messages on them. Ironically and unfortunately, quite fitting with how the game turned out. But hey, if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be smooth. Bit of a letdown overall. I almost feel like this cyberpunk theme was slightly wasted on the mid-range OnePlus 8T and the mediocre OnePlus Watch. But this, weirdly, is actually the part that I'm most excited about. It's apparently a hand belonging to one of the main characters from the game, which also doubles as a charger. Alrighty, if it's nice, I might actually keep this as a permanent fixture in the room. Oh. Honestly, I am not that impressed. It's very plasticky, the fingers can't move, as I've just found out, and it's completely hollow. So that leaves us with number one, the most limited exclusive thing from this video by an absolute landslide. And you can bet your bottom dollar that of course, this is from Caviar, who like to take expensive things and add even more expensive things to them. And as it turns out, this company is also celebrating the exact same thing that Oppo is celebrating. The fact that China reached Mars, just in a slightly more elaborate way. So we have a pair of Mars shoes in here, which I've had to restrain myself like crazy from looking at. And then we have the Mars smartphone in this box here. And they're calling this, God of Fire. All right, there's not much to unwrap here. It's a shoebox, but I'm kind of like nervous excited. Like these are $2,000 shoes. That is many, many times more value than any shoe I've ever even looked at. Let's do it. Got a little letter on top. So the first one says, International Certificate of Ownership, Gold Engraving, Russia. They're gold on these shoes. But then, what is this one? This certificate confirms that the fragment used to create this design is part of a Martian meteorite found in 2011 in Morocco. Excuse me? Definitely the uh, fanciest shoes that have ever entered this building. Just a bit of blue crinkle wrap left. Oh my God. Oh my God. What is this? I mean, I guess if you're spending two grand on a pair of shoes, you, you want them to stand out. They do that. You might even be able to see these from Mars. Even the soles are like hand painted. It looks like a, a Martian crater. These feel good. So they're basically a heavily customized pair of Nike Air Force Ones, which I mean, they're nice shoes, but they're not more than like $150. The reason these are priced at 2000 is A, the paint job, B, the spaceships, which are the things that are made of gold, and C, this little fragment of meteorite. Oh, also they're limited to 29 pieces. Do they go well with my $4 t-shirt? Okay, finally, God of Fire. What does a phone titled God of Fire even look like? Time to find out. Oh, I like this. I don't remember the last time I've seen deep red packaging like this. It feels premium, but I guess you'd expect that for $28,000. Okay, so Caviar normally have an inner box inside of this outer box. Yes. Oh, that's even nicer. Anyways, moment of truth. Three, two, 
one. Holy. <laughs> it's so cool. I love dragons. Oh, I love the color scheme. So we have a gold letter. Oh, a whole bunch of letters. That's a lot of smoke. So this is a certificate for all the gold on it. International warranty. There's a guide on how to use it. Three boxes inside. So the first one is a plain white cable. The middle one, plain white charging brick. And then the final one, oh, plain white earphones. I don't think an M Pro would be impressed. And then you've got a SIM ejector tool, which is made of gold. And then this is a tool you actually need to work the back of the phone. What do we have here? So it starts with red composite stone to mimic the features of the red planet. The black parts are titanium with apparently a PVD coating for extra strength. Prop test? It also apparently, just like the shoes, has a fragment from Mars in it. Again, I say apparently just because I'm not a geologist. I've got no way of confirming but that is what they say. The dragon is 18 karat gold. And get this, all of the frames are double plated in 24 karat gold. And then you've got this enormous thing. I swear this phone is just a portable jewelry cabinet. This is a mechanical watch with a built-in tourbillon. Or in other words, a mechanism that allows it to ignore the effects of gravity. It is ludicrously extra, especially for a device that literally tells you the internet synced time on the front already. But then again, I'm probably not the target customer here. If you think about it, actually, this is basically an extreme China phone. It's based on a Chinese device, the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, which was also selected because of its lunar ring circular camera module. The phone, as well as the entire packaging, is red and gold, which are two colors that when combined together in Chinese culture, symbolize good fortune. It's got what looks an awful lot like a Chinese dragon. And on top of all that, if you look carefully, you'll see that the watch face, as well as the camera module, they pair together to make the number eight, which is considered to be the luckiest number by the Chinese. Needs. And to top the whole thing off, there are only eight of these being made, and this is number one. So, alongside scripting this video, one thing that I've also been doing in my downtime is listening to the audiobook of Dune through Audible, who sponsored this video. And I'm not gonna lie to you, up until about two weeks ago, I thought Audible was just someone reading out a book to you. But it isn't. It's like experiencing a 20 hour movie. There's a cast list, there's different people reading the lines of different characters, so you get a proper feel for who's who. And there's like an entire soundtrack that ramps up in the big moments and then peters down in the slow ones. The key word was maker, maker, maker. There is a ridiculous amount of content here on every genre of audiobook. And I'm like proper impressed that before you even commit to one of them, you can see a three-tiered rating system based on other users' feedback. So if you want to check it out, head to audible.com slash Mr. Who's the Boss, or you can actually text Mr. Who's the Boss to 500, 500 to get one free audiobook, a 30-day free trial, and access to the Plus catalog. To check out my previous ridiculously priced unboxing, that's here. Or to see why I'm worried about the future of humanity, that video is here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, I'll catch you in the next one.